In 1987, Larry Wall falls asleep and hit Larry Wall's forehead on the keyboard. Upon waking, Larry Wall decides that the string of characters on Larry Wall's monitor isn't random, but an example in a programming language that God wants his prophet, Larry Wall, to design. Pearl is born. This is the history of Pearl. And so now, let us learn about why programmers aren't so humble anymore. Pearl is a messy, maddening programming language, the duct tape of the internet, but at least you can tell it was made by humans. Pearl was once everywhere, or at least it felt that way. All around the turn of the millennium, it seemed that almost every website was built on the back of, the script, of this scripting language. I did run into some basic Pearl here and there. It processed massive amounts of text, Mechanisms for doing this powerfully and easily were a part of the language, and it was even used in bioinformatics, munging and churning through genetic data. Based on one list, the companies that used Perl ranged widely. Amazon, Google, Yahoo, Deutsche Bank, uh, Akamai, Citibank, Comcast, Morgan Stanley, Mozilla. Uh, I'll, let's see, a lot of Craigslist was programming in Perl. Uh, Netflix had lots of Perl. There's Perl everywhere. Even at its peak use, the popularity of Perl was always a bit surprising. Perl is an undeniably messy language. It's often referred to as the duct tape of the internet, with programmers joking that it's a write-only language. It's true. There's also, I mean, to be fair, there's, there's, there's many write-only languages. I know this article isn't about AI, but in some sense, aren't AIs just making every code base write-only? When you really think about it, <laughs> good old-fashioned write-only code. I love it. Uh, you write it in, uh, let's see, you write in it, but uh, seldom read it, at least successfully. This is an amalgamate, let's see, this is an amalgamated mashup nature uh, to Pearl, all in service to its motto. There's more than one way to do it. <laughs> what a great motto. You know, if I were to ever design a, a programming language, I think that that would be my motto. Just as there are synonyms in English, Perl has a variety of approaches to writing the same thing. While this is a common feature of programming languages to a certain degree, Perl seems to want to knock you over the head with it. There are multiple ways, for example, of writing conditional statements from using the traditional if to unless to writing an if statement backward in a single line to an even three-part operator that involves a question mark and a colon. To be fair, I mean, if you really think about it, JavaScript isn't that far away from that. Like a lot of C languages aren't that far away from it. Even in beautiful Elixir, you could do that, right? Because if it's just a function, right? But I mean, if you think about it, if we are in JavaScript, you have to do, you know, right? This is how people typically think of it, but that's not necessarily true. There's also, don't forget, there's also one line, okay? There's a couple different ways you can do these. You also have, you also have a switch statement, which is really just an if statement broken up by cases. This is just if else. Right? And even in here, you have to use break if you don't want it to like fall through. So it's kind of like a wily if condition. You can do a lot of things. I have a distinct memory in the early 2000s of writing code in Perl one day, and the next day not understanding what I had written. I have a distinct memory of doing that except with JavaScript. Also with C++, also with C, also I've done that in Rust, and I've done that in pretty much every language I've ever written except for Elixir, because I just simply haven't written enough of it. The name is the prime engine. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie to you. I love being super pro Elixir right now. It is just so exciting. I am in love with pattern matching, and it feels so fun to dunk on people for no reason. Right? It just it feels so good. I haven't been able to dunk on people for so long. All right. But this clutter and a Baroque uh, structure are, in fact, intentional and part of the broader philosophy that underlies Perl. The language creators, Larry Wall, was trained in linguistics. And his intention was to become, along with his wife, a missionary involved in rare languages. What a crazy origin. I didn't know that. Does that mean Pearl becoming less useful means in some sense that when Larry Wall tells somebody about Pearl, he has met his missionary duty in a, rang a rare language? He, by accident, accomplished his task. Huh. Okay. That's pretty, that's kind of exciting. Uh, Wall ended up taking a different path and fully embraced coding. Uh, but his deep thoughts around how languages work and never left him. That's pretty nice. I feel like me and Larry Wall, you know, we have a, 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 a kind of similar story, except for I wasn't smart. Uh, Wall's perspective seems to be that an obsession with linguistic purity was overrated. English has words from French, Greek, German, and even Akkadian. It also has it from, um, uh, uh, the Hensish royal language, right? A lot of good stuff. A lot of good languages all mixed into English. Betraying its winding history and multifractious origins, we split our infinitives and dangled our modifiers. We have puns, both intended and not. So what's a little bit of strangeness when it comes to how we write an if statement? Wall viewed evolution as part of the process of language development. 
There is an organic process going on here. The final product needn't be orderly. And so, a broad, non-judgmental approach to language construction is vital, whether it's a language designed to write scripts or sonnets. Okay. Okay. That seems like a strange way to approach a formal syntax, but here we are, Claude Sonnet. I, I assume we're talking about Claude Sonnet. Okay, Perl has many uh, more, let's see. Perl has its more than one way to do things, and English has its numerous styles and flexible nature, a nature that can contain everything from cooking recipes to haikus, shopping lists to Faulkner. That is a sign of something that is truly open-ended. As Wall once said, I'm a firm believer that a language ought to be an, a, a moral artistic medium. If Perl has any overarching vision or dogma, it's merely the fact that perhaps there shouldn't be programming dogma at all. It seems so strange to design a language like that. To be completely fair, I love the idea that you're designing something that you're just like, you know what, I think it needs to be this way. Uh, it's super exciting. It's like, dude, we're going to make this artistic. It's going to be fantastic. But then you apply it to a programming language. I don't know if I like that. No gods, no kings, only Perl. Exactly. I'm not sure if I like that. Remember, nothing about being a wrong implies that you can't be successful. True. To be clear, I was never a deep user of Perl. Its syntax and messiness overwhelmed its power for me. And when I was introduced to the well-oriented structure of Python, I <laughs> Python, where any property access could invoke a thousand functions underneath the hood. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a crazy statement to make. That just explains how insane Perl is. If you look at Python and you're like, now this is orderly, <laughs> then what you come from has to be insane, right? All right, anyways, I ran into that language and never really looked back. This might, in fact, be a hint as to why the language lost its luster. Even in 1998, during its heyday, there were suggestions that Perl's bloat might lead to desire to jump to something cleaner. Whenever, uh, whatever the reason, Perl is no longer as popular as it once was. Yeah. It's literally that. I don't want to have to spend too much time learning the basic syntax. I don't want to have to come across code that's vastly different from any other code I'll ever see. I don't want five different ways to write an if statement, right? That's not, it's just not for me. I don't want it. Don't like it. Still, I find myself returning to this strange language, and I think it's because of the humanity at its, or humility at its core. Really? We need humility as we recognize that our world is more complicated than we might be able to comprehend, even or especially when it comes to large technical systems of our own making. AI, cough, cough. First off, I love that statement. Insane conclusion. Amazing premise. The premise being our world is much more complicated than we, than we often make it, and we pretend we understand the world in more, compl uh, in more completeness than we actually do, and that we should have a bit more humility about how complex things are beautiful statement using pearl because it makes you humble insane conclusion right that's <laughs> i am struggling on seeing why those two things i am struggling how you go from a to b dude the world's so complex and so just to keep me humble i kick myself in the balls every morning yeah like because if you're not getting punched in the dick then are you even humble you don't have to punch yourself in the dick to be humble, dog. Okay? Do you even humble, bro? <laughs> a single comprehensive theory or model won't cut uh, it in a world of exceptions and edge cases and raging complications. I like the word raging in front of complications. It somehow just makes me feel happy. I'm not sure why. This does actually make me want to write some Pearl. You know what? Hey, I've never really actually done pretty much anything with Pearl. Let's just do a little quickie. Uh, could you write quick sort in Perl in five different ways? Oh man, there are so many dollar signs. Oh, interesting. So you can have a list. My list equals the thing that was passed in. So I assume that return list if, well, that's insane. Look at this. Look at this return statement. Oh, I guess, you know, that kind of makes sense. That's a little bit, maybe that feels a little bit more Englishy if that was the purpose. Hey, yo, return this list if it meets this condition. My pivot equals shift my list. Okay, so they're taking the first element. Uh, I don't know if you know this, bro, but taking the first element in a list is actually considered the worst possible element to take. So, like, if you didn't know that, you're just, like, you're just kind of like an idiot, ChatGPT, for doing that. So you shouldn't do that, ChatGPT. Like, what are you, stupid? Also, this is insane. I don't even know. Like, I, I don't even know what just happened right here. Grep. Oh, I actually do. Okay. 
grep past an element if it's less than pivot in the list. Then we quick sort that list. Then we put the pivot. Then we do the same thing on the other side. All right, so also to be fair, this isn't this isn't quick sort. For those that don't know, this is actually a variant on merge sort. The reason being is that quick sort does meat. not, it, it has uh, end memory. Or, or actually, I guess it has uh, end log end memory as far as, no, 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 no. It, it has end memory, right? Yeah, it has end memory, right? Like that's what makes it, that's what makes it quick sort is that it has end memory usage. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm like 99% correct on that one. I could be wrong. It'd be fair if I was wrong Get because it's all meat. in place. I'm this is, in fact, not in place, right? This is a non-in-place quicksort, so therefore it's not it. Classic LLM quicksort fumble. Dude, it, it fumbles quicksort the most. Out of all things, it's the number one fumbling is quicksort. Oh, it has O1. Oh, no, no, no. It has log N, right? You're right. It's not N. It's log N. It does have memory. It's not O1. Uh, the reason why it's not O1 is that based on its input, the size of the array, it has to allocate log N frames. So stack frames. So therefore it has... Log N. You're absolutely right. I am actually right. Look at this quick sword. What the hell happened here? All right. Well, I don't even know what happened there. Okay. That one's just confusing. We got a while. Next if. Okay, dude, that's crazy. What's a next if? My pop stack next if. Oh, ne oh that's a continue statement. <laughs> Yo, bro. I love continue statements. That's crazy. Yeah, that makes me happy on the inside. All right, and then it's swapping. Oh, this is, oh, okay, hey, this is an in-place one. Here we go, All right? We have ourselves an in-place, right? Maybe? I don't know what low and high is supposed to be. Oh, it's like pushing it into the stack. I don't know what the stack is either. Are these like, oh my gosh. Oh, it implemented a stack itself. Oh, it's not using recursion. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, no rec uh, recursion. Wow, okay. I mean, stupid, but okay. Quick sort using a map instead of grep. Map, dollar sign, grep this thing out. Okay. Well, I mean, you're using grep also. I like how it says instead of when also. Okay. And this one also creates memory. Okay, cool. I, I learned a lot about Perl today. I love this. I love that you state what you're going to do and then the condition. Uh, Could we get one code golf version? Okay, I think I understand this one. This one is obviously creating... Oh, yeah. Okay, you're doing a quick sort over the grep of the list starting at one. You're doing the same thing over here. Okay, I see what's happening. Okay, I see what I see what happened here. That's insane. Good password. That's a great password. Dude, quicksort as a password, that's honestly really awesome. Honestly, working in Perl wasn't that bad, as long as you were doing the right things. Yeah, it, honest, I mean, it didn't look that crazy. It just looks like there's a lot of things like, you know, that's like a, the parameter that's passed in from the list, right? And so instead of saving off a copy of the list, it's using at underscore the, the first parameter, I assume, passed into the function or the list of parameters passed into the function. So in the list of parameters passed into the function, we're going to slice it off from one up until the, uh, up until the what's it called? The length of the parameters passed into, into the function, right? Because this is a variadic function. So it's actually storing the array in function parameters. Cool. There you go. The more you know. It seems really, really easy to do the wrong things with how whims whimsical Perl is. Yes, it is. Uh, can be implied for, it can even be more confusing. Oh, even better. Okay. All right, let's keep on going because I actually want to keep reading this. Let's see. We need slow stumbling approaches and Perl evolved uh, pluralisms can show us the way. I just don't think this is a good argument to be anti-AI. I'm not seeing it. Boys, girls, I'm not seeing this. Perl can even uh, teach us about ourselves. Okay, now I'm curious. Now, okay, bros, this guy is mad glazing. Perl right now. If I had to choose a language that is furthest from Perl, it might be Lisp. Developed around 1960, Lisp is elegant, almost mathematical in its construction. The Maxwell's equation of software, as its definition has been described, just to give you a sense of the uh, esotericism. Perl is, of course, not that. It's organic and sometimes maddening. For all its messiness, in other words, it's a language of the people. But you know the problem, right? If this is the language of the people, for the people, by the people, but the people, they're retarded. Like, that's the problem. Really didn't work out. Really didn't work out for you. The people get what they want and get it to them hard. Uh, and that's the thing about programming languages. They're actually for people. They can't just be parsable by machines. Okay, true statement, true statement, true statement. In the classic textbooks, a structure, a structure and interpretation of computer programs, which I still literally have not read. I have to be the only person on earth that's a programmer that has not read this book. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people, for the people. But the people are Perl developers. <laughs>
Uh, I'll give it to you. That was funny. Hey, that's funny right there. The stream's over. Back it up. That was good. That was really good. The authors make this clear. Thus, programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to execute. Yes, the joke is that Pearl is write only, but you can always tell it was written by human beings. This is the strangest argument I've ever heard to use an just... I think Pearl now would fall... Does Pearl fall into the esoteric sense? No, this, this article is... Dude, this article is amazing. What are you talking about? This article is one of my favorite articles I've read in a long time because it, it's not just a bunch of AI garbage, it seems like. he's a, This person's actually trying to make an argument for why using Pearl is a great idea. It's amazing. And his conclusion... Dude, this is grass-fed, free-range, organic article here. The Pearl... Uh, a renaissance is, I admittedly, unlikely. But perhaps the lesson of Perl is timeless. It asks us to be less precious and more human when it comes to programming languages and their design. Only then might we be able to bridge the gap between us and the machines. Dude, you know what you could also do? I know this one is saying like uh, AI and all that kind of stuff up here, but isn't all the VCs, it's always the VCs, by the way, pushing English is now the new programming language. I I English is going to be the most popular programming language. You know, we've all heard this, right? By the way, if you say the statement, English is going to be the most popular programming language, I hope you do understand that I think you're an idiot. Like immediately, because English is in fact not the programming language. It is a medium in which is translated with all of its foibles and all of its double meanings and puns into a programming language, likely JavaScript or TypeScript, mostly JavaScript, which by the way, sidebar here for a quick second. I love the fact that Theo got triggered by all the people using JavaScript because the LLMs keep producing JavaScript. It just makes me so happy. Dude, the O was just talking about that, and I couldn't believe the O was so offended by JavaScript. I mean, it's almost TypeScript if you think about it. But if you do say English is a programming language, I immediately know you're not technical at all, or you are technical, but bro, you're getting a bag and you are selling out, and that's cool with me, okay? Dude, get that bag, baby, okay? Hey, dude, if you can, if you can trick a bunch of developers into believing English is going to be the next programming language. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's on them or you're trolling. Dude, that was a fantastic article. I love that somehow disordered nature makes it a good thing for us to learn and that we should all return back to monkey when it comes to programming. Absolutely love that. Hey, the name is the prime.